Hey guys, I'm Dr. Lindsay Butzer, a small animal veterinarian, and today we're gonna to talk about one of the most feared and deadly viruses on this planet called rabies virus. So in my hands, I have a one-year rabies vaccine and a three-year vaccine. So the rabies virus is 100% lethal if clinical signs are seen, and it kills up to 40 to 55,000 humans worldwide each year. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what this virus is, how to prevent it, and public safety measures we all need to take for our pets and our family members. <laughs> So what is rabies? Rabies is an RNA virus in the family Rhabdoviridae, with the genus Lisa virus and the species being called rabies. It is a non-cytolytic virus, which means it does not destroy cells, so you won't see any pathological changes in the host when they get this disease. So what animals carry rabies? All warm-blooded animals can be rabies reservoirs but the friendly possum may have such a low body temperature that it inhibits rabies from replicating within its body. But cold-blooded animals like birds, snakes, and fish do not carry rabies, so you don't have to be worried about them. For those campers and hikers watching this video, the CDC reports that 90% of the rabies cases from wildlife come from bats, raccoons, skunks, and foxes. And any vaccinated wildlife in captivity and our pets will not have rabies. How is rabies transmitted? So rabies is transmitted through saliva, most commonly a bite. So if you're bit by a rabid dog or even a small hairline scratch from a tiny bat can transmit rabies to a human. All right guys, so I just told you all of the wildlife that carries rabies. However, worldwide, dog rabies is the cause of an estimated 40 to 50,000 deaths of human rabies each year. So it's our dogs, but this is mostly in developing countries. In the US, there are one to three deaths per year still from dog rabies and wildlife, but 60,000 lives are saved from post-exposure prophylaxis treatment, or PEP, to prevent death after being scratched or bit by a suspected infected animal. Once there are clinical signs, however, sadly, death occurs in 100% of cases caused by the rabies virus. So once you're bitten, what is the journey of the rabies virus through your body? After being bit, the rabies virus then moves into your muscle tissue until it reaches a nerve. It travels 100 millimeters per day through the peripheral nerves, making its way to its final favorite destination, the brain tissue where it replicates, causing encephalitis. Its portal of exit is the salivary glands, which is why you see rabbit animals hypersalivating profusely, which results in the behavioral changes of the animal or human that's infected. So what happens next? How do you know if an animal has rabies? Once you've been bitten, the incubation period for a human is 14 to 90 days. Yup, an entire freaking three months could go by and you wouldn't know you have it. But for dogs and cats, it's much shorter, about three to seven days, and you're gonna see clinical signs. So there are two clinical forms seen an initial furious form, that foaming at the mouth, acting crazy, hyper salivating, being aggressive, and then a terminal dumb form, followed by death in every case of infected animals. Death always follows with the virus attacking the brain tissue responsible for regulating breathing and respiratory failure occurs. Rabid wildlife animals are usually doing things they otherwise wouldn't be doing. For example, a raccoon that is out wandering the sidewalk during the day and stumbling is highly suspicious of having rabies or another disease, and you need to stay away from it. If they are foaming at the mouth, definitely stay away from them and call your local animal care workers to come handle the wild animal. So how do we diagnose rabies? 
It's actually pretty morbid. If somebody brings you a rabid animal, well, they wouldn't bring you one, but when they bring us a rabid animal, we all need to take precautions if the animal's acting dumb, which means lethargic or laying limp, or if they're in the furious form, thrashing around or hypersalivating, we have to euthanize the animal and send in their head because the test is testing their brain tissue where the virus is rapidly replicating. So there is an FAT test, fluorescent antibody test, and a reverse transcriptase PCR test that they do on that brain tissue. And all of these tests are done um, post-mortem. That means after death. But in people, they do them anti-mortem because we're trying to save human lives and they can test their saliva, a corneal impression, um, and those are some things they do at your human hospital. And where you send the head, there is a national database that will tell you guys where you need to ship it depending on what state you're in. So what if your dog has come in contact with a crazy raccoon and you suspect that your dog may get rabies? You bring them to the veterinarian and the vet gives them a rabies vaccine. That's the first step is boost them with their rabies vaccine because we don't know how good your dog's titers are. You can also get their titers checked. The next thing is quarantining them. Your veterinarian will have your dog quarantined at your house for 10 days if your dog is up to date on their rabies vaccine. If a dog has never had a rabies vaccine, there is gonna be a longer quarantine period and it won't be at your house. I will put a link in my description below to the CDC's quarantine instructions for a dog that's been in contact with an animal with rabies. So what are the public safety measures that we need to take to keep our pets safe and humans safe? Number one is vaccinate your pets and domestic animals. The vaccine is 100% effective at preventing the rabies virus from infecting your pet or a human. Number two is vaccinate people that are at risk, such as veterinarians and wildlife experts, possibly working in the field or working in dangerous environments where they can be exposed to the rabies virus. Number three is educate people in schools and universities and on the news about this disease. Number four is reduce human risks and deaths by having post-exposure prophylaxis and treatments. Number five is follow strict quarantine protocols for animals that are suspected to have come in contact with a rabid animal or an animal that is suspected to have rabies itself. All right guys, there is a lot to learn about rabies virus. I didn't put everything in this video, but if you learned something today and you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up to help it circulate to other animal lovers like yourself, and I will see you guys back here next week.